This next one comes from Facebook. I saw your video about psychopath business partners. I just had the rug pulled out from under me by someone just like that and created a scenario where he got all the control and got all other partners to side with him and he took me for all my money, which was almost 30k and countless time and energy spent helping him. Jesus, when will they lose? So I, I believe he's referring to a Business Outlaws episode, not SDR, right? Because uh, Big Mike and I talked about that a couple times on there. So, um, yeah, I'm getting, I'm way better at pointing out psychopaths. I think I've gotten rid of all the psychopaths in our company because I had a couple. The last one I kind of still lingers a little bit, but is gone. But yeah, more psychopath free here. It wasn't easy though. Those psychopaths are hard to get rid of. Oh, they're, they're, they're leeches almost, right? <laughs> they are. It's pretty crazy. Because they, they feed off of the drama, and so they just they keep trying to gaslight you and make stuff up, and they lie if the truth is better, but yeah. We could almost sorry, do a whole show. that that happened. We could almost do a whole show on gaslighting, actually. We really could. Holy cats. The thing that I come back to with that, though, is it's all my fault. I allowed it to happen. The older I get, though, and the more I give Big Mike a lot of credit because I didn't really understand it until he really started pointing it out. And then I really went to work on on learning it and figuring it out and read books on it. And I'm just going back in time. Like, I can't believe how many how many psychopaths I've I've dealt with because I'm a I'm a codependent. So, like, I try to please people. And I get taken advantage of in the worst way. And it's all about boundaries and, you know, holding your line. I pride myself on trying to be really fair. And uh, like this last psychopath we had working here, <laughs> they took advantage of that is, you know, I let them, but they did. So, yeah. Do you want to add anything to that, Jeremy? I feel like Jeremy is um... probably better at this than, than I am. No, I'm just kind of disappointed in the questions this week. It's like they're more like comments. You know, yeah, exactly. So I have a challenge now. Here's the thing: I'm going to be on vacation for two weeks, so we're going up to Yellowstone. Totally stoked to spend some time with the family, and uh, I am going to give a hundred dollar bill to the best question that comes in over the next three weeks that we read live on the uh, next SDR that I'm on. So hundred dollar bill coming your way. Throwing your own skin driving you to ask a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any more, God? There's one more comment, but it's not a question. It's a comment. And it comes from YouTube. I left a family-owned small service center and used car dealer to go work for a BMW dealership. They told me that they don't rip people off. Then three months down the line, I got multiple complaints from the manager that I wasn't selling enough. I will not tell a customer they need a 5K bill on a 1K car. After telling the manager that the place was an overpriced scam center, I asked for my job back at the small, independent, family-run center and went back. The way you talked about it in your video was the normal, tell them it needs something, even if it can wait another two years. And to me, that's not acceptable. So this okay. is another comment? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I don't, no, like, I don't, I, I, we have I, never, not, we have never, gonna. ever, ever <laughs> condoned overselling a customer. In fact, I, we're in the hundreds of how many times on this show I've said, if you wouldn't sell it to your mother, don't sell it and treat customers like family. So you're kind of a dick. Like well, if you want <laughs> go, what I would do if I was you go start your own show. Don't listen to our show. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Hey, Seriously. Um, so we have the never thing is, condoned overselling anything to anybody. No, our job is to educate and inform the customer and fully disclose everything the car needs every time it's in and help the customer make a good decision based on their goals for the car. So something that is due in three years is going to be labeled as green on the checklist. That's not even going to be brought in the conversation. So I don't know what this guy's smoking, but I think he's way off base with his comment. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely service managers that might take over a BMW store or a Toyota store or anything that over, 
recommend and, and aren't ethical, but I, you know, you shouldn't work for them. I wouldn't either. There's no way I would no, work in a know, service drive they, where I was told I had to sell things that uh, customers didn't need. The thing is, though, is from your tone, I, I can't tell if you're a pain in the ass or if you really are ethical. Right? No, I, yeah, I, I think... I, I, go Christian, ahead. the floor is yours. Go ahead, sir. So based on... There was a little more to the comment uh, than what uh, God shared with us today. I think the well, thing... you read this? Yeah. You're checking it Well, thanks for sharing the insider knowledge with us, bro. Like, so, leave us So taken? there's something that's really natural to you guys having no clue what's going to happen before it happens, which is a lot of fun. It's kind of like my okay. jokes. Like, I have all the jokes prepared, Jeremy, but I don't tell you a darn thing because it's great to see the look on your face when I tell them. But Perfect. I do believe that uh, that that word ethical um, is being used in convenience in this whole comment, right? So I think that... What our responsibility, as Jeremy said, is to make sure that we're telling people the truth and also letting them know what is due or not due and then properly defining what preventative maintenance is. And I think that we'll, we have a band of people that are service advisors out there that feel like the ethics and the truth is to not tell anybody anything and just assume that the, the cars are going to live forever and they don't need any kind of preventative maintenance. But if you've worked in a shop before, you know that's not true. Oh, well, the stats, like whoever this person is can't argue with the stats that preventative maintenance saves people money in the long run in fact a lot of manufacturers under recommend like let's just talk about bmw and power steering fluid there's literally metal chunks in the racks and the racks on a lot of bmws are disposable at a hundred thousand miles and they never they don't recommend to replace the fluid right because it's because so, it's lifetime or whatever yeah right? so i don't if it was my mom's car i would tell her replace the fluid there's gonna be metal chunks in there and you're gonna have to buy a rack and it's like that with a lot of manufacturers because the manufacturers try to get customers to perceive that they never maintained them but the truth of the matter is is the cars aren't disposable at 10 years or 100,000 miles the average car on the road right now is almost 13 years old the highest it's ever been and if you think a 13-year-old car didn't need its fluids changed at some point, I don't, I'm not a tech, but I'll tell you there's, there's a lot of techs that will tell you that that's not, it's just not factual. But what else? What else did the guy say? Well, well, I have a comment. There's another side to look at this. So it goes from a small mom and pop over to, uh, was it a dealer? Is that correct? A BMW dealer, he said. Right. So, and then they, they judge you based off of your sales ability, right? So your KPIs now become, sales are the highlight. Now, here's one of the things I've discovered working on both sides of the fence. The, a lot of times, some of the independents can create a business model that is working on older vehicles and then they're triaging and just become a repair shop. And then the cars become a little bit older. So the maintenance is kind of out, you know, is taken out of the equation. But when you go to an expert and you have expert technicians that understand these cars inside and out, down to every nut, bolt, and torque specification, and they know how to make these cars purr and just seeing there's differences that come out of what's recommended and what's not. So it possibly could be that the advisor went over to this new place with a bunch of experts and just was overwhelmed with what they were recommending and felt that this stuff didn't really need to when in fact it actually did. And it's going to provide a better product for the customer. So there's a lot to this that we just simply don't have the answers to right now. Yeah. Anything else that we should know about this guy? Maybe, maybe, maybe not about this guy, but I do think it's important that I tell everybody that uh, that I wasn't. <laughs> that was your question. Like that was your question. You you laughed before oh, the delivery. Your, this is really getting challenging. Your conspiracy theory, Jeremy, is that it, was your question. That? You were the one that actually sent that in. It's not even a question. No, it's a comment. That man. wasn't me. These but, are the worst questions we've ever had. It's been. Rough. I know we that's why a question segment anymore. If we don't. Get no, we are. That's why I'm breaking out the cash. the cash. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna make it rain. Cash. Holy oh, cow! It, it has been busy send in this period. Send your questions in. Yep. It would appear that Jeremy's been to a strip club before. The way yeah, he made it rain for sure. Yep. Have you this done that in a strip club? <laughs> Cracker Barrel. Will you come visit me in Vegas? Yeah, I strip will. clubs there. No, I won't go there, but I'll go to Vegas. <laughs> you know, you know, Jeremy, that uh, that this year COVID has kept me from taking my one-month vacation in the Bahamas. 
Wow, I'm sorry to hear that. You typically take a month off in the Bahamas every year? No, normally I can't take that vacation because of time and money. So this year it's COVID? It ruined your imaginary vacation? Yeah, exactly. I get it. Down with COVID! Down with COVID. Okay. Are we good, God? Is that all the comments? That is all the comments. God is going to crack a beer and put his feet up because they gave him a headache. <laughs> yes, right? I agree. Thank you, though. Good job. Sorry about what Christian said about your son. Thank you so much for watching this clip of Service Drive Revolution. Now you can catch the full episode on YouTube, iTunes, or Spotify, or wherever you consume your podcast. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post new episodes. I'm Chris Collins, and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Chris Bulldog Collins. And I'll see you again on the next episode.